Boy, kill me here, yeah. Come on, boy. Go look. Go Thank you very much. My name is Michael Leahy. I'm the sheriff of the Irish Street. I'm happy to be here today. I always say when I hear the Cork accents uh, from Derek and uh, Liam there, you need people from the, the, the People's Republic of Cork in any organization. You know, it's a strange thing to have to say, but there are times when it's only possible to conclude that our government is actively engaged in the attempt to destroy the peace and stability of our society and to undermine the rule of law. Okay. Right. That's great, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent. Firstly, our government seems to be engaged in a deliberate policy of population replacement of the Irish people. Now, replacement theory has often been described as a conspiracy theory by our journalists. But this is anything but a theory. It is a mathematical certainty. What has happened in Ireland is that when we joined the European Union, we had a fertility rate of 2.8 in 2.8 and 3.2. The entire uh, fertility rate of Ireland now is down to 1.7. But the reality is that among the native Irish people, the fertility rate is between 1.2 and 1.4. Now, when you have a situation that you're way below replacement level in your native population, and you have no cap whatsoever on immigration coming into this country, that is replacement of the native population. There can be no doubt about that. This is not a theory. This is a fact of mathematical certainty, and there is not a single demographic authority anywhere in the world that would deny that every European country is in the same position, and that they're all having their populations replaced. This is, a, this is something which is inevitably going to lead to civil and social unrest in the very near future. There was a time when I would have thought that that would be the result of incompetence, but I now come to think this is deliberate policy because they want to create the, the conditions of instability within our society. Why? You'll leave it further out. Sorry, is that better? Okay, thanks. Why not make it more feasible for Irish people to have families? The government has done everything it can over the past 30 years to attack the Irish family and to make it more difficult to support and to raise children. We all know that Ukrainian immigration is a proxy for an open borders policy and that a huge number of those posing as Ukrainian refugees have no connection whatsoever with Ukraine. When you have a completely irresponsible immigration policy, and this is permanent immigration masquerading as compassion for refugees, this is a, is a recipe for destabilization and civil unrest. The present policy of refusing to place any cap on inward migration derives directly from the decision two years ago to sign up to the United Nations Treaty on Migration. This was done against the protest of our party and was introduced into this country without so much as a debate in the bar. The government alone well is very happy to tell you that there is nothing they can do about a particular crisis, whether it's immigration, energy shortage or carbon tax, on the basis of the international commitments we have made. Leo Vratka recently said, even if we wanted to limit the migration of refugees, we couldn't do so because we're being strong armed by the European Union. Well, there is something we can do about it, and that is to take back our independence and get out of the dysfunction of the European Union as quickly as we can. The UN Migration Pact places an onus on our government to house incoming refugees within four months at a time when Irish people can neither afford nor acquire housing. This effectively places Irish people as second-class citizens within their own country, and again the government will wring its hands and say there's nothing it can do. How about following some of our policies, such as taking VAT off houses for first-time buyers, or reducing carbon taxes, which directly affect energy prices and feed into inflation? 
or how about ending the fame of the tax commission of multinational vulture funds, enabling them to acquire housing and outbid Irish bidders for first-time buyers? How about developing an effective local-based finance system directed at facilitating homeowners? If the government were serious about ending the housing crisis, they would be able to do so if they pursued those policies. However, I've come to the conclusion that the government is not interested in solving on the, uh, policies or solving problems on behalf of the Irish people. It is interested in creating problems because it sees the present moment as a great revolutionary opportunity and it wants this country to be to the fore in being subjected to the great reset where we will own nothing and we will be happy whether we like it or not. In other words, we will do what we are told. Well, I have news for Mr. Martin and Mr. Colby and Mr. Radko and Mr. Ryan. The Irish people were never very good at doing what they were told, especially by a criminal mob who did not have the interest of this great nation at heart. The government's solution to the housing problem will not involve any of the sensible policies which our party espouses. Instead, they propose to use the housing crisis entirely of their own making as an excuse to attack the rights of private property. The so-called right to housing referendum, the proposed 39th Amendment to the Constitution, and that's coming up soon, and we better get active to stop it happening. This government has committed to do that. It will effectively end the right of ordinary citizens to security of ownership within their own homes. I can assure you this will not be about providing housing for ordinary people, but about ensuring that all housing, for all, all housing is in the ownership of the carpet sector and of the elite. If the government can forcibly remove you from your property or forcibly require you to take an immigrant, and you can be sure that's what they're going to do, then not only will it not solve the housing crisis, it will make it ten times worse. There are two essential elements in any free society. They are the right to free speech, including freedom of expression, freedom of worship and freedom of assembly, and the right to ownership of private property. Without these, no legitimate policy, politics is possible, and nobody can vindicate their rights against the predatory powers of the state, and our state is now a predator against its people. Both of these rights are under unrelenting attack from our government and from their masters in Europe, who are the pawns of Wall Street and the City of London. The proposed hate speech legislation, masquerading as an effort to protect the vulnerable, is in fact a naked effort to stifle political dissent and to criminalise debate. It will not be possible for, for us to have meetings such as these in the near future, because if anybody who even raises the issue of immigration, they will be described as causing offence and they potentially face up to five years imprisonment. Do you believe that? If you don't believe it, go and look at the legislation. That's where our government is going. It is intending to put people in prison for up to five years for causing offence. And if we do not understand how serious that is, that's what's coming. It happened before in Soviet Russia and that's what these people want to bring into this country. If you don't believe me, look at the legislation. The whole hate speech legislation represents a direct attack against our legal architecture and will turn the law on its head by requiring innocent people to prove their innocence and by questioning their motivations for the words that they speak. The European Union is at present engaged in the extraordinary feast, perhaps the first time in history, that they're going to lose a war in which they're not directly involved. Everything that it has done in connection with the Ukrainian war has had the effect of damaging the countries in Europe and improving the economic situation of Russia. There was a time when I would put this down to stupidity on the part of people like us who under Lyon, but I have now come more and more to the conclusion that their efforts are a deliberate effort to deindustrialize and to destabilize Europe. Is it not correct to ask whether Vladimir Putin is right? when he says that the Western powers have become captive to what is in essence a satanic agenda. I was delighted to hear the first two speakers calling up for prayers today, and it's wonderful to see a prayer for Lenman coming back into our politics. Perhaps it's time for us to start saying our prayers and to ask for, ask for the help of Almighty God and call in the name of Jesus in the struggle that we face. What we saw during the lockdowns was a dry one for what government has in store for us, probably using the pretext of another health emergency, or more likely a climate emergency as a cover. Emergency powers, prohibition of speech, coercion against innocent people, 
prohibition of religious worship, enforced sexualization of young children, seizure of property, combined with forced mass migration and population replacements. That's what we witnessed, and this is all, of course, part of the green agenda, which seeks to the destruction of industry, while having no idea of the ramifications this will have for food supplies and for people being able to provide the basic necessities of life. Greenery has nothing to do with protecting the environment or saving the planet. It has to do with transferring wealth and ownership into the hands of the elite who claim they were governed on our behalf, but were only governed for their own benefit. The sad thing is that the most likely alternative government will in fact be far worse than the present one. In every one of these policies, Sinn Féin are more extreme, they are more globalist, and they are more anti-Irish than the parties which they seek to oppose. <laughs> we must come to the conclusion that the present parties in the Dáil are the enemies of the Irish people. I therefore strongly urge you to consider voting for the Irish Freedom Party at the next general election. We need to come together. We're far too fractured. There are far too many bodies out there. The Irish Freedom Party does have few...